There is just one thing we would like to let you know in this introduction, and that is the fact you really don't need to end up on death row. After hearing these 50 facts, we promise you that your head will be blown. 50. Okay, okay, some hard facts first. Some of you may be wondering what's death row. Well, it is simply the name for the part of the prison where criminals await their execution. For instance, if you get sentenced to death in California, you'll go to a death row unit at either Court Curran State Prison or San Quentin Prison. You're thinking, tell me something I do not understand. Okay okay, how about the fact that California contributes to the US in terms of the number of men and women who are on death row? Florida is next with 347 death row offenders and Texas understands the bronze using 218 death row offenders. 49. We will provide you some more challenging facts soon. Let us now add some insanity for this narrative. As you might suspect, some death row inmates aren't of a sound mind. They might not have been declared insane by the courts. However, probably, they were very much certifiably mad. In 2004, a man named Andre Thomas killed his estranged wife and two children. He used another knife for each killing, later saying that he did not want to contaminate them with demons. He removed some of the organs and subsequently stabbed himself in the chest. He then left a voicemail message for his deceased spouse's parents. It went just like this, I want Hal's help, something awful is happening to me also it keeps occurring, and I do not know what's going on. I want some help, I believe I'm in hell. I want to help. While he was in prison, he removed one of his eyes, and later three physicians affirmed this the guy had schizophrenia. The state didn't care, and the guy stood trial and was sentenced to death. While serving time on death row, he removed another attention. And proceeded to eat it. He is still awaiting his execution. Yep, that is a crazy story, and they'll become even crazier. 48. Thus, which states have executed the maximum death row inmates since 1976? The top three countries are Oklahoma with 112, Virginia with yet another at 113, and Texas far away, at number one with 566 executions. 47. Lots of you do not understand this, but it may take a really long time to get yourself executed, often between 15 and 20 decades. The typical time spent on death row before execution or launch, yep, a lot of guys have been innocent on, death row, is 16 years. 46. Individuals literally go mad waiting to be murdered by the state, and this insanity is actually a phenomenon with a title. It is called the death row phenomenon, and we will speak more about this later. For now, all you want to understand is it means essentially losing your thoughts. 45. Okay, okay, so that you may devote a good deal of time on death row. Because you'll notice, more inmates on death row have been innocent than you would think. Actually, it is mind-blowing sad just how many folks have gotten off death row. One guy spent 39 years there, and his name was Gary Alvord. He killed three people and has been sentenced in 1974, but like the guy we talked, he had a lengthy history of severe mental illnesses, including schizophrenia. The state knew quite well that he had been totally insane, which is why he could never be implemented. He cried 39 years and saw 75 other death row inmates in Florida depart and never returned. 44. Okay, okay, so one more man who spent quite a while on death row was a man named Jack Alderman, plus he spent 33 years fighting for his freedom. He was accused of killing his wife, though there was no forensic evidence along with the story is just plain bizarre. He had been sentenced only on the testimony of another man, a man who might have actually been the killer. The execution of Alderman has been called a gross miscarriage of justice since it is highly improbable, he murdered his wife. He had been offered all kinds of bargains and would not have been executed if he just said he was guilty. He refused to do this each time that he was offered a plea bargain, and said he simply couldn't admit to doing anything that he hadn't done. He had been executed in 2008. 43. You don't actually have to kill somebody to be convicted of murder. You can wind up on death row after having been convicted of murder, but you might not have been sentenced for actually killing someone. 42. 
If that's confusing to you, here is a story. One night you were hanging out at the park, but this particular night there are a couple of men, you do not know that well. All of you men get a little drunk and then opt to go to town. Both new men get into a battle. They beat some dude so bad he dies. You were merely there, and you did not even throw a punch, plus you didn't understand these guys really well. However, if you're poor, have a crappy attorney, and perhaps a couple of minor offenses to your name, you might be charged with something known as felony murder. If you are African American, you're even more screwed. Regrettably, racial bias in the American justice system remains prevalent. Okay, okay, the point is, you sometimes just have to be there. If you do your own study, you'll find lists of people that were executed for just being there. This was the other man that pulled the trigger or stuck at the blade. You'll find names like G.W. Green, Carlos Santana, Joseph Garcia, and many more. 41. An additional thing that you need to know is that you could get charged for murder if one of your friends expire. Yep, if you've heard of this Elk Heart 4, then you will know that four kids chose to burglarize a house, and the homeowner shot and killed one of these children. The three other children were charged with felony murder and were looking like 55, 50, and 55 years behind bars. For something some man did when protecting his house. They did not end up spending any time on death row and finally got considerably reduced paragraphs, but it's a warning for you all. 40. A guy named Nick Yaris spent 22 years on death row for a crime he did not commit. He educated himself, and he was later released after DNA evidence proved that he did not commit the offense. You can view his story in the documentary film, The Fear of 13. 39. What about lethal injection, what's that? It's a three-shot cocktail. The first part is usually sodium thiopental, a super strength barbiturate that essentially knocks out the person. Then, pancuronium bromide, a muscle relaxant, should create the lungs not work so well and the third part is a vitamin. Enough of the will affect the heart and should cause cardiac arrest. We must also say that certain countries have their own recipes. 38. Actually, lethal injection, while generally viewed as the most humane form of execution these days have a tremendous botch speed at 7.1%. Yep, that is a lot of may ask if the formidable guillotine it caused less pain for some folks. The botch speed of the electric seat is 1.9%, dangling, 3.1%, and the gas chamber, 5.4%. 37. You may now be thinking, wait a moment, in recent years, there have been bodies piling up all over the USA during what we call the opioid crisis. In 2018, there were 46,802 deaths related to opioids such as heroin and fentanyl in the new title, Wave of Prescription Opioids. The amounts were comparable in 2017 and 2019. Therefore, that is around 150,000 deaths, which, if you've ever seen you, pretty much way likely to sleep and not waking up. It sounds pretty gruesome. Since 1999, there were around 800,000 deaths in the USA due to medication, and largely the deaths were related, although the opiates might happen to be mixed with a different medication such as a benzodiazepine. Then there's the lethal threesome, the opioid, the benzo, and the booze. Anyway, some folks have stated why not give folks a powerful drug like fentanyl when you want to execute them. It is obviously a formidable killer on the streets, and why not mainline murderers with it? Well, in 2018, Nebraska became the first state to utilize fentanyl as part of a deadly injection and they even threw in a benzodiazepine. They knocked him out with the opioid, slowed him down with all the relaxant, and for good measure they threw in a number of their core stopping potassium chloride. 36. Lethal injection often fails because the executioners cannot find a vein, but on one occasion, they really injected the substances into the flesh of a person and not his veins. 35 minutes later and that he got another shot. That sort of time frame is what we call cruel and unusual punishment. Others have only responded badly to the cocktail, using their own bodies to move into spasms and yell from their mouths. However, the actual horror tales included the gas chamber and the electric chair. 
this you will hear about later. 35. There might also be two separate cartridges during a fatal shot. The next one is a backup. 34. A man named Romel Broom actually survived his implementation in 2009. During the span of two weeks, the executioners attempted to find a vein. Romel, allegedly sobbing at times, even assisted them. But it failed. They took him off the gurney, and the state was accused of cruel and unusual punishment. Romel is still on death row now. 33. Okay, okay, this was before modern death row. But when the British settled in the colonies, they had a record of 222 crimes punishable by death. If you ruined a fish pond, you could perish. Or if you awakened with a rabbit, Warren is strung up. Yep, that is crazy, but we've got more crazy down the line. 32. Serial killer Philip Karl Yablonski was on San Quentin's death row for several years. He was an avid letter writer, writer pen pals all over the world. He would occasionally draw animations on the letters, however frequently, they were very upsetting. In fact, his letters may be fine in roles, then suddenly he'd discuss really grisly things he'd done. He really killed his first wife but married a female pen pal when doing time for this murder. When he got out, they could finally be together as a real married couple. He soon killed his brand new wife and killed her mother. Yablonski would kill again, and he would get caught. Believe it or not, more girls proposed to him when he was on death row. He recently died in his cell, so he is no longer an eligible death row coach. 31. In fact, a few individuals have gotten married while on death row. One of the worst serial killers ever got married even though his hobby was brutally killing women. Some women have a thing for killers. There's a term for it. It's called hybristophilia. 30. The death penalty was really abolished for a while, but it came back in 1976. In the US, there are only 29 countries in which the state may murder you. 29. Since 1976, there have been 1,512 executions in the US. 28. Only 15 of those executions were of girls, and 25 two of the executed individuals were juveniles. 27. Since the death penalty, there have been a total of 294 instances of clemency. That is when someone with power steps in and says this guy should not be murdered. The president of the state government could do so, but they might have to weigh up a lot of facts and think about the public's reaction. This does not indicate that the person is released or that which we call exonerated. It merely means the person's death sentence has been commuted to another sentence and it sometimes appears as it does in the films. That is, it can happen only hours before the execution is supposed to be completed. In 2020, a man named Jimmy Meters was given clemency just a few hours before he had been about to get a lethal injection. His sentence was reduced to life with no possibility of parole. Members were accused of murdering a store clerk, but he says the other guy did it. He has even tried to get DNA evidence to support this, but that hasn't been possible, however. He claims he's innocent. He had no criminal history before the event and contained a pristine prison record, which was all taken into consideration when he had been granted clemency. We will soon tell you the shocking truth about innocent people on death row, but we believe you need to hear different details first. 26. One Republican governor stunned the entire world from the early 2000s. His name was George Ryan and in 2003 that he said, okay, okay, enough is enough, something stinks here, and he pardoned every death row prisoner. Yep, all 163 men and 4 women who had already served together over 2000 years were removed from death row. Why would he do such a thing, you might be wondering. Okay, okay, let's just provide a statement. You should hear it. The facts I have seen in reviewing every one of those cases raised questions not only about the innocence of people on death row, but about the fairness of the death penalty system as a whole. A lot of people were angry, rather than only diehard fans of legalized killing. killing. Some families of the victims were annoyed and angry. The thing is? Are they searching for the right man to die? 
Mr. Ryan made his decision after seeing his condition had executed 12 people but had exonerated 13 innocent men who had been wrongly convicted. 25. If you actually look at pardons given all around the US, you may see they aren't given which often? In fact, Illinois leads the way with 187 pardons, and in second place in Ohio with 21. The majority of states have only one, two, or three pardons. 24. Has a pardon ever happened just like in the films when the second hand is on display and the prisoner will get saved the very last minute? The answer is yes. It occurred in 2018 to a man named Thomas Bart Whitaker. Bart was just in his early 20s when he decided to kill his entire family and assert the inheritance cash. The family was very wealthy, we should say. The son got his roommate to kill his mom and brother, but his father lived being shot. It had been the father years later, who would protest to the governor and also get off his son passing row. Both had become great friends. The father said his son was the last of his loved ones, so to kill him would be to leave him with no one. It appears the governor could not dismiss that plea. 23. In the past, when a prisoner was being marched into the death room, the guards would yell, dead man walking. People on death row have said whenever someone goes, it's always a very gloomy day. 22. Death row in some prisons was criticized because of its own conditions. In some places, so much so, that the prison was forced to shut the wing down and build a brand new one. Death row inmates are often locked down in solitary for 23 hours a day. They'll sit in that windowless cell for several decades, and unlike other prisoners, additional murderers do not usually get to mix with men and women on the lawn or of prison tasks. It's said its solitary confinement might be described as being buried alive. It's said the men get three showers a week, and five times a week can leave their mobile for one hour. However, they never have to watch sunlight or the sky, because their exercise time is just in a different concrete box, a bigger concrete box. But, every prison isn't the same, and we watched some prisons where death row inmates can work and communicate with other offenders. We should say that in some cases, this had come following lawsuits. 21. These conditions can and have led to something called death row syndrome. This may mean guys trying to take their own lives, but that's not easy in lone confinement. Some men literally lose their minds. They get mentally ill on death row and might begin having visual and auditory hallucinations. Some men simply waver their appeals and plead for the end to come sooner. 16 years on death row in those states can be hard. In fact, because of these brutal conditions, other nations like the UK and Canada have refused to extradite people to the US. They say no human ought to be kept in those conditions as it breaches criteria of human rights. It's not about the death penalty, but what comes before it. You've all resided in self-isolation at home for a while. Now imagine that the house was just one small cell and four cement walls. Imagine no one could speak with you except when someone gave you meals or took you to a different cement room for one hour a day. Now envision this went on for years, and in the end, you may die. Do you think you'd get death row syndrome? 20. It sounds like not all passing rows are the same, though, since we found a current story that told us, San Quentin, one death row inmate killed another death row inmate while the two were outside. That was really very unusual, and San Quentin officials stated it was the first time that had occurred since 1996. Death row inmates are separated from the remainder of the prison. However, they do get to go out in the lawn together. Death rows all around the United States don't usually see much violence. They're for the most eerily silent places. 19. Scientists in the US and nearly anywhere in the world say the death penalty does not deter killers. In fact, there are reduced murder rates in US states that don't have the death penalty. Some experts believe the death penalty does deter serious crimes, but they are in the minority. The split is around 90% that doesn't think that it functions and 10% that believe it works. 18. The USA lies in about 7th place in regards to most executions per year. China leads, 
although it does not report its executions. North Korea could also be a really high number, but the country will not report the numbers. Other big lovers of executions are Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Somalia, so the US is in fairly bad business when it comes to human rights documents. 17. The first prison escape from death row was in 1934, along with the guy who got away was the gangster, Raymond Hamilton. The notorious Bonnie and Clyde helped him escape. The following death row escape wouldn't be until 1984 when the notorious Briley brothers did something much more over the top compared to a Hollywood film. They took on the death row unit, stole the guards' uniforms, put on riot gear put a TV on a stretcher and walked it out of prison whilst saying it was a bomb. They then drove off into the night, laughing like hyenas while smoking their stash of weed. 16. A guy named Martin Garul also escaped, and then he scaled fences and ran to get his lifetime while guards were shooting at him. However, he didn't get that far since his body was found in a river not long after. One of those shots had struck him in the back. 15. Hangings used to be public occasions, and they were quite popular with a few people who treated they just like a family day out. The father would read the paper and appear gleefully, Wow honey, grab your jacket, there is a hanging today. 1936 was the year of their last public hanging from the US, and as much as 20,000 people turned up into the up, and at Kentucky. Nope, he committed the crime in June and was hanged in August. The documents demonstrate that the death row and the death penalty are way longer expensive for the taxpayer. 14. One analysis in Maryland showed that the normal cost for each case was $3 million. Another study showed Louisiana spent $15.6 million per year on its capital punishment system. Still another research in 2018 revealed that in most countries with the death penalty, the additional cost per year was nearly $3 billion compared to if death row criminals had only been given a life sentence without parole. That is why some people today argue for the abolition of the death penalty. Not because of moral concerns, but because it costs a lot. 13. A Gallup survey in 2019 revealed that 60% of Americans supported life imprisonment with no the prospect of parole over the death penalty. In 1986, it had been just 34% of Americans that held this opinion. 12. There was a woman called Kelly Gissendonner, and in 2015, when she became the final woman in the United States to be executed, for now at least, she had been the sole girl on death row in Georgia. Her offense was killing her husband, and she didn't deny doing this. On death row, she converted to Christianity and created the group Struggle Sisters. As a way to help women get through their time, Gissendonner may have had more freedom than some people on death row. She sang the song Amazing Grace until she had been awarded her cocktail of drugs. 11. That cocktail of drugs price is only around $100. The killing area isn't the most expensive component. That's the imprisonment part along with the mind-boggling legal expenses. 10. Sometimes prisoners order rather odd meals for the meal that they have before they have implemented. However, regarding numbers, a cheeseburger and fries have become the most regular meal. 9. Back in 2012, when a man named Gary Simmons was asked for his last meal that he might have been trying to die by way of coronary attack. That is because his final meal contained 29,000 calories. We aren't likely to mention all the things since there are simply too many. Let us just say it included a great deal of junk food, a ton of chips, dips, fries, and cheeses, plus a spoonful of coke. 8. A guy named David Matthew spent 17 years on death row in Oklahoma and tried a few occasions to demonstrate his innocence. Before he was given a lethal injection, he joked, I believe that the sheriff's telephone is broken. He hasn't called yet. 7. Approximately 90% of people on death row could not afford their own lawyer and thus had to be given a free one by the nation. 6. 
legal specialists and statisticians who did some investigating believe that from 1976 to 2004, 4.1% of people who had been given the death penalty was actually innocent. This has been 340 prisoners who they believe were innocent or are innocent. The authors of the report stated there is hardly any doubt that innocent men have been executed. Should you see true crime shows, you will know why so many people might have died innocently guys. It's typically shoddy police work and the absence of evidence. That, along with the fact some evidence that affirms the innocent is sometimes purposely suppressed, or forensic evidence has been tampered with. 5. In 2019, two men named Clifford Williams Jr. and Nathan Myers were released from prison after they had been given death sentences. They had served 43 years behind bars. One of those guys went in aged 18 and came out dated 61. The flip went in aged 33 and came out aged 76. These men weren't released because of DNA evidence. It was found that there was very little evidence to prove that they did the crime and they actually had witnesses saying they had been with the guys when the murder was perpetrated. This is the reason why money matters. This wouldn't have occurred if they had had a good lawyer. 4. There have been 167 exonerations of prisoners on death row in the US because 1973. DNA testing helped get some men off death row when that started to be used. To be individuals convicted from hair tests have been given new trials because hair comparisons used back earlier DNA testing proved not reliable. 3. One was Paul Browning, and he had served 33 years on death row in Nevada's Ely State Prison. His case went back into court, and that court said there'd been bothering prosecutorial misconduct and inadequate assistance of counsel during that man's first trial for murder. After 33 years that he walked and he also told the media, I just would like to locate a tiny bit of calmness after coming through this madness. Hmm, 33 decades of madness, that's a lot to take in. Charles Ray Finch was also exonerated from death that year and was pushed out of prison in a wheelchair at age 81. He'd spent 43 years on death row as an innocent man. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit said the evidence against him was woeful, and police had apparently pressured people to testify against him. They also established an extremely sketchy lineup not remotely related to whatever you could call justice. Official misconduct and getting people to tell lies in court, or individuals lying in their own behalf is a reason for a lot of exonerations. 2. Okay, okay, so what about an innocent man who did get executed? This narrative is nothing short of insane. In 1976, two police officers were shot when checking on a parked automobile. The interior was a driver and a man named Jesse DeFerro. His wife and children were sleeping in the back seat. DeFerro was sentenced to death for being his wife. The children went to live with the wife's parents, but both were put into care when those grandparents died in a plane crash. DeFerro was executed in the electric chair in 1990. Old Sparky did not work well, however, and it took seven minutes for the guy to die. Before that, his head set on fire, and it wasn't a fantastic scene. It turned out that the driver did the shooting and that he even admitted it. The evidence pointed to the motorist doing it, also. Tefiro's wife was later published, but just after she had served 16 years since an innocent woman. She actually ended up marrying a man who'd been exonerated after being convicted of murder. 1. Most nations have compensation steps when individuals are convicted and later exonerated, but not all countries. 33 states right now have reimbursement laws for exonerees, from regular prison or death row. Just how much a person gets can considerably differ. In Louisiana, an individual can get $250,000, but that should be paid out within the span of 10 years. In California, the maximum is $140 per day for every day wrongfully served. So, for 43 years, you would get over $2 million. Wisconsin only gives $5,000 per year wrongly imprisoned, and that is about as great as a kick in the face. It also caps the amount at $25,000. Texas is very good. It provides $80,000 per wrongly imprisoned year and helps with other things, such as child support and legal fees and getting back on your feet and fitting into society. 
a civil rights violation lawsuit can also be filed, particularly if there was an official misconduct from the nation might add up to tens of thousands if the exoneree wins the case. Then you have stated such as Iowa and Oklahoma, in which you pleaded guilty, you will get nothing. Yep, a few innocent men on death row have pleaded guilty before. In ordinary prison, plenty of innocent guys take plea deals. In Florida, you won't have compensated one dime if you'd like any crime on your own record. It can also take years to get any compensation. One man who did 20 years as an innocent man obtained a check for $25,000, but that was four and a half years after his release. Some men in some countries wind up with nothing but a goodbye, sorry we messed up. It all depends on the case, and the condition, a guy in California, spent 39 years behind bars for a crime he did not commit, and he sued the authorities. He obtained $21 million. He also got $1.95 million to the $140 per day the nation awards people who have been wrongfully incarcerated. We hope you are learning something new every day from our videos. If you want us to cover a specific topic, let us know in the comment section below. We are doing our bit to spread awareness about the common health conditions and exciting topics. Do your part by sharing this video with your friends and social circle. Thank you. Get value by subscribing our Get Value channel. Thank you.